America's Wealth Coach, and it's time to get wealthy. You're going to learn exactly what you need to know and do to finally achieve the level of success you desire and you deserve. The Student Loan Forgiveness Program has gone through all kinds of changes. There's been new terms introduced. There's been new loans forgiven. And the question I have is, is it too late? Well, that's why I'm excited because joining me today is our Wealthy You resident student loan forgiveness expert. Well, she doesn't only do that, but anyway, here are the three takeaways from today's show that you should know. The first thing is that there have been changes to the program and you need to stay up to date. The second thing is that some of the deadlines have been changed or extended, so you've got to stay in the know. And then finally, the good news is that persistence pays off because we have many people in Wealthy You who are getting their student loan forgive their student loans forgiven all because of our next guest expert. She's Dr. Tisa Silver Kennedy. She is a financial wellness advocate and she specializes in student loan debt, in fact, and she helps borrowers get those student loans forgiven. But not only that, make sure that when they do take on student loans, that they do it the right way. And I wanna welcome Dr. Tisha Silver Kennedy back on Get Wealthy. Thank you so much for having me. You know, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Well, it's always a pleasure to get in the know with you. Well, the exciting news is though, Tisa, in our Wealthy You community, I wanna say we probably are up to about $300,000 in student loan debt forgiven in just our community alone. But I want, before we even get into this conversation, bring us up to date. Based oh. on your organization, how much, how many millions of dollars have you helped folks get their, uh, get waived? So we're just over $5 million and counting. And I only count the dollars where someone has sent me a screenshot and I can see the receipts. So um, the actual number I'm sure is much larger, but I can confirm uh, just a bit over $5 million so far. Well, you know, my question to you though, uh, Tisa, I remember when this idea was just the genesis for you and we were working together, kind of figuring out what your path would be. And did you ever in a million years think that you would start this organization and that really help be a catalyst for helping people navigate what can be a pretty confusing uh, process? You know, I always thought that it would happen, but just not this fast. Sometimes, you know, your environment is changing so much that, you know, you have the right skill set and um, passion and you're able to meet the moment. And that's really what happened for me. I've been plugging away in this student loan space for a good 12 years now. And just thinking about ways that this message about, you know, student loan benefits, forgiveness and cancellation could be spread to more and more people, especially black borrowers because they stand to benefit the most. And I've thought about it and how can I do this? And how can I, you know, um, scale this up? and how much should I charge people? In a perfect world, I wouldn't have to charge anyone at all. And so now I've come to a place where I've built a nonprofit organization that has funders that allow me to provide this type of service to borrowers for free and then bring to them to a place where they can have thousands or hundreds of thousand dollars forgiven without having to pay a dime. Wow. So tell them, before we get into this conversation today, let's let our, bring our viewers up to date just about your organization and the kinds of services that you offer. Yes. So I created a nonprofit organization called the Maryland Center for Collegiate Financial Wellness. We are focused on Maryland, but we don't turn anyone away. And through that organization, I'm able to provide one on one advising sessions for student loan borrowers to help them assess their loans. Also um, evaluate their eligibility for benefits and help them complete applications. Um, my model is one that says the borrower remains in control at all times. The people within my organization are just there to support 
support them, translate things sometimes, and guide them as they make the decisions that make the most sense for them, their families, and their student loan portfolios. So uh, we were founded in 2021. Uh, the growth has just taken off so much because of all of these changes in the student loan industry. The center is really about helping people who are on all places of that higher education continuum, helping them make informed decisions, especially when it comes to financing that higher education. But all of these changes in the student loan space just caused me to redirect a bit and focus on, on getting as many people out of debt as possible as quickly as possible. Mm. Well, another thing you mentioned uh, in your initial uh, response was the fact that Black student borrowers are uh, positioned to benefit the most from these programs. Just expand on that for just a minute. Sure. So in 2020, I actually wrote a book. It's called Borrowing While Black. And that kind of um, laid the foundation for what became the Maryland Center for Collegiate Financial Wellness. And in that book, I really just examined outcomes for Black student loan borrowers. And I found that uh, Black student loan borrowers are borrowing more often, borrowing in larger amounts, graduating less often, earning less upon graduation, and also landing in student loan default more often than their peers of other races and ethnicities. So when I looked at these outcomes, I thought, well, what's out there to, to help people and speak to them in a language that's digestible and actionable? What's out there to help them navigate this student loan space? And that's what led me to write the book. So I really, um, I want to help as many people as possible. But when I look at numbers like that, that tells me that my energy needs to be directed toward the people who uh, need this forgiveness and these benefits the most. So much of my work has been concentrated in Prince George's County and Baltimore City, although I've been able to help people um, really across the globe with this. Interesting point that you make in terms of your research and Black borrowers being able to benefit the most, Tisa. And then finally, the other question that I had for you is, as you have, uh, as you have brought on, uh, help more people, I guess that's the way I want to frame it. As you have helped more people, what are you finding are some uh, uh, pitfalls that borrowers need to be aware of as they, you know, as they apply to get their student loans forgiven? Uh, I think the biggest pitfall is just to take one step and let it go. Uh, some people have, you know, filled out an application and just kind of placed it in the hands of those that are making the decisions. But sometimes when you send off an application, um, it may be flagged for something that's illegible or something that they say does not qualify, but actually does. It's one of those things where the application is just the first step. The journey begins after that application. So I would encourage people to take an active role, just like they would with their investments. You don't put money into the stock market and then ignore that stock's performance after you've made your investment. You follow up on it. This is the type of the thing that you would want to stay on top of. You want to stay in touch with your servicer. You want to um, read um, the experiences of other borrowers if you can and share spaces so that you can know what's really happening with these application processes. And you just want to make sure that you are getting access to the benefits that you've earned. And it doesn't always mean that if you send in a piece of paper, it's going to come back with the answer that you want. It might mean that you have to follow up several times. It might be that sometimes you have to politely check them because you did the right thing, even though it was flagged as wrong. But you have to stay on top of this if you want to see it through. Love it. I mean, that's one of the points that I wanted to make in this show. And what we're finding in Wealthy You is that persistence pays off. And to that end, I'm excited because when we come back, I'm going to have someone joining us who was the benefit of having Dr. Tisa help her get her student loans forgiven. So don't go anywhere, folks. When we come back, it's our mindset strategy execution. That's where we're going into our mindset uh, segment. And you're going to learn exactly what you need to do to be successful at getting your student loans forgiven. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back. Let's be honest, as successful women, 
we're crushing it. Maxed out 401k and Roth IRA? Check. Aggressive savings and investments? Check. Yet, the freedom our success was supposed to buy can leave us stuck on the six-figure hamster wheel, watching retirement slip further down the road. There's another way. Get coaching courses and community at WealthyU.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Deborah Owens, and this is Get Wealthy, and we're going to help you get wealthier. You know, it's not just earning more money or investing more money. The other way to give yourself a raise or to increase your net worth, you know how it is? is to get rid of debt. And that's exactly what we're talking about today, student loan debt. I'm really excited because joining me again is Dr. Tisa Silver Kennedy, but joining us is one of our Wealthy You uh, community members. I wanna invite her on as well, Linda Figgins, who learned of Dr. Tisa Kennedy through our Wealthy You community. So come on in folks, let's, Let's show everybody the few fruits of the labor. You know, there is nothing better, I believe, than uh, actually having someone go through the process. And so, Linda Fagans, thank you so much for joining us on Get Wealthy. Thank you, first of all, for inviting me. And first of all, I want to thank you for having the Wealthy Youth Society. It is a wonderful community with you as our leader. First of all, you work on our mindset. And just what you're saying, you emphasize execution, execution. But you got to get the information and you got to use it. And when I was on, I had just joined um, the Wealthy Youth Society. And I heard you mention something about a Dr. Dr. Tisa and um, loan forgiveness and my mind just my ears perked up and so I got the information from you and I contacted her and believe me she is a part of the wealthy youth society superpower because she is such a full of first of all professionalism knowledge intellect and compassion and first of all she understands the system you got to understand the system and see and i'll put it like this i have three degrees i didn't have any loans until i went to get this last one and then i'll be frank i borrowed too much that i shouldn't have and then i also that's number one number two i didn't follow my own advice in the sense that I should have applied for this type of loan a long time ago. So I kept, people kept telling me, are oh, you not? Because what I was trying to qualify for, for one or two things, um, it was, they, they were saying, you missed the deadline. And then I also, my second hurdle was, was that, oh, the type of loan I had, before I could get the loan forgiveness, you had to convert to another one. I was told, oh, you not, if you convert, they're going to jack up. Um, excuse me, but you know I know better. Jack up your price. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna do this or that. So when I went to Doctor uh, Tish, she just assured me, I explained to her everything. She just knows that system. And the first thing I liked about her is number one, you get intimidated by the process and the application. She was online with me, and hey, I can read pretty well. But I was, I didn't want to do that application. It's like, oh my god. I thought it was going to take hours. She said, hit this, hit that, do this. She says, no, nah, don't, it didn't, it did this. Was she determined? Did she get phased? No. Uh, she, did she get, uh, she said, do this, do this. We filled out that first application. Cause remember I had to fill out two applications before I can get to the one where she could get me to get the loan. So to, in order to even be considered when we finished that one, she said, let's do the second one. I'm saying, huh? And, and, we, and we went through that. Some, some, some tried to flack and not work. She says, we're going to go around that. She just <laughs> professional. Plus she was compassionate. She didn't get out of whack and so forth. And then she explained to me a process. She says, now, first of all, they're probably going to reject you. And I was saying to myself, yeah, they're going to really reject me. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to let me get through. They're going to look at this and that and this. But she explained to me what to expect. And just as surely and she told me, you know, follow up, let me know what was going on. I would let her know. And then just as surely as she said, they rejected me. I wanted to say to myself, I didn't say it to that. I said, nah, they're going to really reject me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the truth. So you said, got us in tears over here. 
I know this is, this. Only, this is true. And then in February, I got just I saw the letter. I said, Oh Lord. I opened up with congratulations. <laughs> You are forgiven of $67,000 in student loan. And I like said, oh, there is a God. And thank God for <laughs> Dr. Tish Kennedy. <laughs> and for just the exposure. That's what we need. Um, the exposure to knowing certain things and procedures. And that's what I love about Wealthy Youth Society and Deborah. She exposes us to a different mindset, a level, a way of thinking. Because sometimes our level of thinking is low because we didn't know it existed. We didn't know that those that we could have exposure to that. And then number two, she pushes us about executions. And then she also looks us up and she said, Oh Lord, you know you shouldn't have been in that. I don't know. How you doing? <laughs> oh, oh my goodness, Linda. You're giving up all the insight secrets. Now you yeah, know. So I just you know, love it. And I thank you again because it added on to my portfolio of, of reducing debt. And then my mindset, and the next thing is not to do with loan forgiveness. I said, oh gosh, I got to start doing, she tell me to do, I got to get to, get to my portfolio and start working with these loans. And when I started looking at it, I said, doctor, oh no more. That's what she's talking about, how we don't follow through. And now I'm a person that preach follow through, but I wouldn't follow taking my own medicine. And so therefore I'm so thankful for, again, for Wealthy Youth Society and what it provides, especially to black women. And, and teaching us on a higher level how to hold fast to our money and to make more money. I'm thankful for Dr. T and we need more of persons like you that we're, because you were just, uh, you were just wonderful. And the applications, I said, look at this woman telling me what to do. <laughs> I said, whoa, because I kept saying, well, oh, no, he's stuck. Well, Linda, Linda here, and I want our audience to know, and because I think there is a lot of shame around always feeling like we should already know. Now, uh, Linda, you are, you have three degrees, you have a law degree, right? Yes, and yes. I mean, you have been skillfully trained and yet this process still seemed intimidating. And what I want people to understand is that we are experts at what we do. Now, the one thing I'm not going to do is try to be an attorney, right? So yeah. if I were to need someone to represent me, I would hire someone to help me to do it. And I think to your point, you said something really important that I want to double click on is you have all these little naysayers around you telling you what you can or cannot do, Linda, because you said you had considered it, considered consolidating your loans, and you had all these people chirping in your ear saying, oh, if you do that, your interest rates or whatever are going to be increased. And so I want to go to Tisa now. Is Tisa, what, what, uh, what would you, in Linda's situation, uh, because Linda, you mentioned that your loan, what type of loan did you have? That this was a graduate degree loan? Yeah, this was a graduate degree loan, and I had got it through. Um, it was a certain type of loan they had, but it wasn't the right kind that would get me to the loan forgiveness. So she had to okay. work through numbers of hurdles. She just couldn't just look at mine and say, we just did the application. I had to go through two processes. And see, every time I would talk to someone about that, you know, it just seemed like, oh, I don't want to do that. So, but, but I was still waiting. I said, this deadline like coming up. I'm Then, you know, that that lawyer spirit in me kicked up. I'm going to try this, especially when I heard you say that. I say, hey, I'm going forth anyway. I said, Dr. T, I said, um, I said, but they said, I, she said, no worries. And that's what I liked. She showed professionalism. She had that knowledge. And plus, she was calm and compassionate. It wasn't all this authoritarian thing because, you know, I could feel embarrassed that because of the degrees I have and then I'm stuck with this. But, I, but you know what? Like, um, I, like somebody told me, uh, a closed mouth don't get fed. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it. Tell it. And, well, uh... and, and the other thing that you, that you say, and that's what makes me love the wealthy you, you a lot of times that I'm speaking to us and Dr. T, you know this black people don't follow procedure and that's what gets us out. We might have the best case, but you get intimidated by procedure. See, I know that legal. So I would be the, like her with the legal, but, but with the procedure, well, procedure, because you thinking you're not. 
And that's how they become wealthy. They, they use all the ways of the system and we must use the ways of the system to our benefit. And when we learn those ways, we don't want to get back to debt as Dr. Um, as Dr. Owens, uh, uh, who knows, I just you gonna give me a doctorate, okay, girl? I'll take it. <laughs> Tell us girl, about gotta, how we yeah. can grow our wealth, and so I think that's so important. Yes. Yeah, so when we come back, man, this is lovely. When we come back, I want that we were talking about mindset, and Linda, you really double clicked on that. I really appreciate your sharing and being so transparent because that's what's important. But when we come back. Uh, it, it's clear that you used a specific strategy with uh, Linda around, you know, these different hoops that she, which she has to go through. So when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about a specific strategy that you used in order to allow, even though she didn't have a loan that would immediately go through, but allow her to eventually get student loan forgiveness. So don't go anywhere, folks. Hey, we're showing you where the money resides, right? Right here on Get Wealthy. We'll be right back. We feel the hidden impacts of climate change that land harder in Black, Brown, and Native communities. Not many people talk about it because they clearly don't know our lives. But with President Biden's landmark infrastructure and climate plans, our issues are finally seen. Removing lead pipes means we know our water is safe. Cutting carbon pollution helps our kids breathe easier. 1.5 million new jobs mean stable work in communities. The impact we need. Right now. Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! It's a real uh, revolutionary right now. I thank you for being the voice of Black America. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? everyone. I'm Deborah Owens, and we're talking about Get Wealthy, but you need to go and call everybody because you need to learn what you need to do to take advantage of the student loan forgiveness programs. That's exactly what we're talking to. Our resident expert, Dr. Tisa Silver Kennedy, she has a, an organization that really helps student loan borrowers get rid of debt. Let's invite both uh, Dr. Tisa and Linda Fagans, who was the, uh, am I pronouncing that your last name right, Linda? Yes. Oh, I love it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> who is the recipient of the expertise that Dr. Tisa's organization is able to provide so far more than $5 million in student loans forgiven. And I'm so excited about that. So Dr. Tisa, one of the things that Linda alluded to was the fact that she had one kind of loan, but that it had to be consolidated and then forgiven. So talk to us a little bit about when this situation could present itself and what folks need to know so that they can position themselves correctly. Sure. So the most important factor that people need to be clear about when it comes to student loan forgiveness benefits is the type of loan that they have. Even if loans are federal, there are different types of federal loans. And for the specific program that Linda was going for, it's called Public Service Loan Forgiveness. The Public Service Loan Forgiveness program only applies to a type of loans called direct loans. So when we started out, the first thing we had to do was examine Linda's loan types. And when we looked at her loans, we saw that the loans were not direct. There are another type of federal loans called FELP loans. And with FELP loans, they are considered federal student loans, but they are, were originated with private banks involved. So they're not eligible for many federal student benefits that direct loan borrowers can get. So we looked at Linda's portfolio, drilled down to the loan types and saw these are commercially held FELP loans. That means they're ineligible for public service loan forgiveness. They're also ineligible for that broad relief plan that uh, President Biden announced last summer. So in order to get her in the pipeline for public service loan forgiveness, we had to consolidate those loans. 
And when you consolidate those older loans, you're basically paying them off and originating a new loan that's a part of the direct loan program. And just by that loan uh, going from being a FELP loan to a direct loan, it opens up possibilities for student loan forgiveness. Wow. And I can't imagine the number of people who are in Linda's situation and are being, you know, being turned away for ineligibility and, and not even being told that they can uh, consolidate into this direct and, and, and become eligible, right? So what advice would you give someone? Give us a little maybe flag or something that we need to be aware of so that we can determine what type of loan we, well, I guess the point would be, then how do I know if the loan I have is eligible to consolidate into that direct loan program? Absolutely. So the place where everyone needs to go is studentaid.gov. That's the online home of the Office of Federal Student Aid of the Department of Education. When you log into studentaid.gov, you can take a look at your entire history of student loans, whether the loans were borrowed from one institution or another. Everything that's federal can be found there. Once you log into studentaid.gov, there's a My Aid section and a dashboard. That dashboard will show you all of your loans. From that dashboard, um, you can drill down to the breakdown, a list of every single loan that you've ever taken out. And when you look at those loans, there's one more step you need to take, which is to click on something that says view loan types. When you look at the loan types, that's when you can see the full name of the loan. It will say felt subsidized or felt unsubsidized, or it might say direct subsidized or direct unsubsidized. Either way, the words you need to look for are direct and felt. If you see the word direct, that means the loans are eligible for public service loan forgiveness and other uh, federal student loan forgiveness programs. If you see the word FELP or the um, acronym FELP, you'll know that th those loans must be consolidated if you want access to public service loan forgiveness or some of the other programs that are available right now, um, regardless of whether the person works in public service. But the key is identify the loan type. I also wanted to say that uh, sometimes when a borrower insists upon looking at their servicers records instead of the records in studentaid.gov, they're not getting a full picture. When you go to your servicers website, sometimes you might see a loan listed as loan A, loan B, or loan one or loan two. And when you drill down on it, it can be hard to find the exact type of loan that it is. That's why I recommend that everyone, of course, Stay in touch with your servicer, but go straight to the lender. If your loans were from the federal government, then studentaid.gov is where you need to go. It's the same. It looks the same for everybody. So when you go in there, you can see all of your loans and you can clearly distinguish one loan type from the other. And you'll know for real, you know, if you are eligible for certain forgiveness programs. Mm, that's good. That's so the point really in summary is that you need to know what type of loan you have. And then from there, you're able to determine if it uh, qualifies for loan consolidation. Man, I'd be an ex, no, I don't wanna be an expert in this, trust <laughs> me. <laughs> you got this. So when we come back, but I'm so, I just love that Linda's smile is so big. I know I would be too if somebody had just gave me basically $67,000, that's how I feel about it. But anyway, when we come back, I really wanna go in the next segment into execution. And I wanna come back to Linda then because I wanna uh, kind of drill down and see you know, what you have done in the past. So folks, when we come back, I want to make sure, number one, that you don't let this opportunity pass you by and perhaps you have been denied before. Again, go call everybody, your cousin, your friend, everybody in the neighborhood. Tell them to tune in to Black Star Network, Get Wealthy, because we're dropping gems on how you can find more money by getting your student loans forgiven. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We feel the hidden impacts of climate change that land harder in Black, Brown, and Native communities. 
Not many people talk about it because they clearly don't know our lives. But with President Biden's landmark infrastructure and climate plans, our issues are finally seen. Removing lead pipes means we know our water is safe. Cutting carbon pollution helps our kids breathe easier. 1.5 million new jobs mean stable work in communities. The impact we need right now. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Deborah Owens, host of Get Wealthy, and we're getting wealthy around our student loan debt today. My guest today, guests are Dr. Tisa Silver Kennedy and also Linda Fagans, who is a Wealthy U community member who is someone who benefited from our guest expertise. So let's welcome them back for our execution segment. And Tisa, I want to talk about just for a minute, really positioning yourself to uh, take advantage of this. So perhaps you were like Linda. Linda, did you, prior to uh, hearing of uh, Dr. Tisa, had you already tried to get your student loans forgiven? Okay, what I had tried to do, first of all, and this is maybe a mistake I made, and this is something that Dr. Um, Tisa could tell persons, I was trying to get some of the payments uh, deferred first, okay? And that's a whole oh. thing deferred. I had gotten some deferred, and then I ran out of deferments because I, I was taking care of some, you know, some extenuating circumstances. So um, it came up that I needed to, I was hearing about this loan forgiveness. And then I learned because I was working for the government in public service, that it, this was this loan forgiveness. But I was told you have, you, you need to, so for instance, you need to tell your children if they're coming out of college, they have a loan and they're starting with the public government, they need to start applying for, and Dr. T Tessa could, she can she can really tell you this. You sometimes you have to apply for that loan if you want to be considered under loan forgiveness for that like public service or for that. They were saying that you you should have been put your application in, and it's 15 years later, and I never put an application in for that. I'm telling you how she saved me and how it worked out to my good, to my good. So so I what I did was I um. I, I, I started saying, I, I want this loan forgiveness and this is something else. And when I heard, and so I was, I'll tell you, I would call the servicer, as she said, rather than, the, rather than that federal government aid, as she told you, and I would try to see what I could work out. And they kept saying, well, no, you don't have this type of, of the loan, the direct loan, you had this loan. And it took a long time for them to even tell me that was the type of loan that I, why I didn't qualify qualified but it wasn't still made clear and so then i so what happened was so i did little things like that but then i they and, and so someone said you might have to consolidate and then but i was just i told you people in the ear saying they're not gonna let you if they do it's gonna raise if they reject you it's gonna raise your mouth you have to pay back sky high you have to begin you would have to begin like you've never paid money in. And I had been paying money in and so forth. It was all kinds of information or misinformation or, or not the full truth about what the process was. So I, but I was determined and I was really, it, it was just a blessing for me, a blessing for me being with wealthy you, but I took the action to try to want to learn more about your money because we as black women have, you know, we deserve to, to be wealthy. <laughs> okay. And, and so, <laughs> well, you know you're gonna get an amen on, with <laughs> from me on that. But to that point, so that's why I want to go. I wanted to. I, I really wanted folks to understand. Listen, you're trying to get uh, something forgiven, and you're not paying that interest. Is taking money out of the uh, funders' right pocket, and so. You just need to be prepared to encounter, right, some kind of pushback, uh, even when they know. So this is the problem I have, though, Dr. Tisa, is she's trying to work with this servicer. They're telling her she doesn't have a direct student loan, but they're not telling her what she needs to do to convert. Is this common if someone encounters this, what do they need to do? 
So I, um, from my observations, it is common. When someone who's representing that servicer, you know, tells them to, you're not eligible. That's true. But by making it such a closed off statement, that makes it sound as if there is no way for her to become eligible when there was a very easy way for her to become eligible. It was through consolidation. But if you think about the business model that you brought up, you know, a servicer is the point of contact for billing. That's where you send your payments to. And if they lose you as a customer, that's lost revenue on their side. So sometimes you have to wonder, you know, when you're calling people from these businesses and you're asking them about, you know, how to proceed in a way that is in your best interest, they also have interests and much of their interest is a profit motive. So I don't want to speak broadly about servicers and say that, you know, all of them give bad advice. But I will say that for many of the people that I have dealt with, especially those that I've helped to get out of these commercially held felt loans in recent months, many of them report that they were told by their servicer, you can't get that. You're not eligible for that. Your loans aren't this tight when all they had to do was add on to that and say, but if you really want access to that program, you could consolidate. And as a right. servicer, as a party that is supposed to be working with you in your best interest, I'd expect that from them. But that's just not what I've seen. And that's the point. I mean, I really want folks to know, like you have to arm yourself with knowledge and information and certainly I would say, well, you got to take action, right? And so Linda, you could, I mean, Tisa's been on, interviewed on Get Wealthy, a has been a member of the Wealthy Youth Society, has come on, has done Wealthy You Wind Down with me. And we have just been, you know, going in on uh, student loan forgiveness. What perked your ear up to get you to execute, even though you had tried to be prior to this? Well, first of all, I kept hearing, you know, the news was going on about the loan forgiveness. And I said, shoot, I want this loan forgiveness. They've taken advantage of the system. And I kept saying this away because I kept going back to that servicer. Then I kept going so forth. But then I just, I had joined the Wealthy Youth Society and I heard you talking about it. And when you said that, you know, loans could be forgiven, I just said, okay, I'm going to call and make a consultation. So I took the information. I uh, got the information from my... Um, my ambassador, uh, uh, or I call her my ambassador, but I think you call him a good success person, Anita. She gave me the name and I, I went to her website and I signed up. I mean, it was very reasonable. I couldn't believe how reasonable she was for what, for what your benefit and look at the cost of what I got. She was so reasonable, but I was <laughs> Tell it. <laughs> Tell it. But, but, so here's the point though. Here's the point I want to make. Uh, uh, Tisa, the, the reason why I wanted to, because it, see, that's real. Like that's, that's in real life. You know, this isn't some theory. This is Linda has been impacted by it. And, and just to see the joy that she has, because that's what, you know, being in debt and having something unresolved does to you. Right. So we are, uh, we are right in the thick of it now. I believe I would love if you could share with the audience, what are the deadlines? Is it too late to, to, to apply? What does someone listening to this, hearing this for the first time, time, what do they need to do? Okay, so the first thing I'd like to let people know is that it's not too late. The program that we were focused on for Linda was the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, and it had some temporary changes that expired on October 31st of last year. So we were really pressed. We're going to get all this paperwork done. We're going to get everything in by October 31st, and it's going to work out in a few months, and it did. Now, right before that deadline came, the um, Biden administration came out and said, well, we're going to end this temporary uh, waiver. However, many of these provisions are going to continue on through something else that's called the IDR adjustment. I know I'm throwing out lots of acronyms, but just remember this. IDR stands for income driven repayment. And another avenue to forgiveness is paying on an income driven repayment plan. Many people don't know this, but IDR plans have provisions for cancellation baked into their rules. And when a person has been in repayment for either 20 or 25 years, depending on the types of loans they had, the rest of that debt is supposed to be canceled. 
And it doesn't matter if they're working for a public service employer. It doesn't matter if they're working at all. That's just what's supposed to happen. It hasn't been happening. So the same types of rules that the Biden administration implemented for that public service loan forgiveness program, many of them have been temporary, temporarily implemented for the IDR plans. So if you are a person who's been paying on your student loans for what feels like forever, you need to make sure that you take action before December 31st of this year. That's December 31st of 2023. That's when um, that's the deadline to consolidate those older types of felt loans that are ineligible for most benefits and to get them in the pipeline to benefit from this new program, the IDR adjustment. So um, first thing is just be aware. It's not just about public service. Second, it's not too late. Third, if you have those older loan types and you're really interested in getting them canceled, you should seriously consider consolidating them and doing so by December 31st of this year to get the greatest benefit. Girl, you just hurt my heart. And I, I just got to tell you why you hurt my heart. It's because I remember sitting with someone and them telling me that they had taken out parent plus loans and that they're their children were thriving and doing well, but they had these loans, they were elderly and they were struggling to pay these loans. And I know it had to be their kids were in their forties now. So they had been paying on this loans all that time. So are you telling me that if they had been paying on those, pay with, number one, do parent plus loans qualify? for that 20 and 25 year uh, repayment forgiveness? Yes, so people who have parent plus loans have now um, been recently added to this benefit. So mm -hmm. the year, um, the threshold for them is 25 years. So if they've been paying on parent plus loans for at least 25 years from what the Department of Education has said, they should see automatic cancellation. Now. If um, there are people who are close to that 25 year mark, then it wouldn't be automatic, but they just wanna make sure that they get enrolled in an income driven repayment plan so that their future payments can count. But this has been so encouraging for parent plus loan borrowers because they're often shut out of these benefits. And um, the limited PSLF waiver allowed them to participate in some if they work for a public service employer. This IDR adjustment initially did not include parent plus loan borrowers, but I think it was about January when they came out and said, you know what, we're going to extend this, um, this cancellation benefit to parent plus loan borrowers. So I would just like to speak to them specifically right now and say there is a way out. It doesn't always have to include working for a public service employer, although that takes less time, but there is a way out for you. You just want to make sure that you go to studentaid.gov Take a look at those loan types. If you have the type that needs to be consolidated to get the greatest benefit, make sure that you do that before December 31st of this year. But there's definitely a way out for everyone at this point. Wow, this is this is amazing. But here's the thing that is I'm concerned about is that how is this information being communicated? Are you being sent something that says you qualify or is this something that you really need to be on uh, studentaid.gov or somewhere really researching on your own to make sure that you're taking advantage of this? So some borrowers may have received emails. Um, the issue that I hear uh, from many people is that when the emails come first, there's no trust there. You know, they're already dealing um, mm. with a trust deficit because they've heard about this program or that program. Nothing's ever worked for them. And they don't want to get their hopes up about something else that's not going to work. Um, the second thing is that sometimes the messages are very lengthy. Um, sometimes they are not clear or they are clear. But when you follow the links and go to explanations for different things, there's conflicting information. So there's just really um, th that trust deficit is so huge because when someone doesn't trust you, they're not going to read all of that fine print because they've already mm -hmm. decided. I don't want to hear what you have to say anyway, because that's not going to help me. So if people will read those emails, 
you know, go back to studentaid.gov and take a look at the announcements section. The announcements have up-to-date information about the IDR adjustment. But even with that, if you go to studentaid.gov, you'll see that the IDR adjustment, you know, there's plenty of information there, but there's also things that say, you know, the waiver expired on October 31st. The original rules went back into effect November 1st. That's true. However, a person who benefits from this IDR adjustment can take those same periods and those periods can convert into eligibility for public service loan forgiveness as long as they document their employment. So in effect, those rules of the waiver live on, even though the language there says that it expired October 31st. So it's really important for people to not only you know, visit studentaid.gov, but also find some experts that you trust and follow them because there's a lot of interpretation that has to go on when these announcements come out. First of all, I want to publicly thank you for coming on Get Wealthy because that's the whole point of this program. The issue, and you, you nailed it on the head, Tisa, is that we are so suspicious, but rightly so. I mean, if you could hear some of the conversations I have each day about so-called legitimate organizations really not following through uh, and doing the right thing, I understand that. And that's why I think it's important when we have an expert like you come on and then they see the benefit of what the outcome that happens when you follow through. So I have to just thank both of you for coming on Get Wealthy today. Always, uh, uh, Dr. Tisa, uh, being willing to break what can be a very dense, complicated system yes. Yes. so that we can take advantage of it. So thank you both for coming on Get Wealthy today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. When we come back, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's segment. And again, keep this, lock this in. Make sure you uh, uh, bookmark it so that you can share this information with your family, with your friends, with your community. And remember, this is the only time you get this information is on Black Star Network. When we come back, the three takeaways from today's show. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 2003-7-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Welcome back, everyone. And here are the three takeaways from today's show. Guess what? You won't know if you're eligible unless you apply. So apply now because there is a deadline. Secondly, know what type of loans you have. That's really going to determine whether or not you are able to take advantage of these opportunities. And then finally, Sometimes it's not, it's just a delay, not a, a, a total rejection. Thank you so much for watching Get Wealthy. I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and this information comes to you only on Black Star Network.